a massive machine, but it's, it's a real piece of precision engineering too. From the moment we launched the kit to make the first internal module, right through to the engine being dispatched, it's 20 days. The fan blade delivers 75% of the engine's thrust. It shifts about 1.2 tonnes of air per second when it's at full throttle. After about 30 seconds, you've got to come away. You can't stand there too long. If you do, you just start burning. Every bit of this is all put together by hand. We used to fit a bolt that was wrong. The aircraft was to come down. We run thousands of hours of testing. An explosive detonation releases the blade from the disc at max takeoff speed and fires it into the fan case. The engine is destroyed. Derby is Rolls Royce. You mentioned Derby, everybody says Rolls Royce. These are better well than the one, better class than the one. They don't need my voice. Morning. That's the inspection department, very friendly people there. It's a very tough competition with one of the most powerful and uh, competitive companies in the world in General Electric. It's not until you see Trent Fleet fly over. Ah, I've made my uncle pick it up. Today, you know, we're the lead. We're the most efficient engine flying in the world. This is the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Test 35 crossway 11200 to the ramp. Designed to be the most fuel efficient jumbo jet ever, it's touted as the future of air travel. Even in sort of a grey Seattle day, that paint job is beautiful. After years in development, the plane is finally ready for its very first flight. The weather's atrocious, but it's a make or break moment for Boeing's first new airliner in 10 years. You know, our plane is taxiing, and so we're proceeding inbound. I'm switching to. And no one's more gripped than these engineers watching live over the web in Derby. Because they have designed and built the plane's groundbreaking jet engines using technology that'll save each plane three million pounds a year in fuel. If the flight goes according to plan, Rolls-Royce could find themselves building the greenest, cleanest engine for many of the world's airlines and securing orders in a highly competitive industry. The engine includes some of the most advanced aviation technology the world has ever seen. This is the story of how a British company leads the world in building the most advanced jumbo jet engines and of the people who build them. Rolls-Royce jet engines are built at state-of-the-art factories all over the UK. It's a huge operation, with orders worth over £40 billion in civil aviation alone, and employing around 11,000 people building them. A new engine must roll off the production line every 36 hours. Morning, Kev. Oh, this week it's my turn, but well, I tend to be more times in a suit than not. Wow, actually, I could have been building one of these in a, maybe a few months or designing one of them. Maybe, maybe one day. There you go. That's it. Look at that beauty. It's a work of art. Rolls-Royce's main assembly plant is a vast 300-acre complex of factory buildings in the southwest corner of Derby. The city has been home to Rolls-Royce for 100 years. And for many of the 250,000 people who live here, the company is a way of life, in work and play. About 12 years ago, uh, I joined the, the Rolls-Royce Ladies Choir. We rehearse every week on a Monday evening at the Rolls-Royce Leisure Association. It's a real enjoyable evening. Uh, after a day at work.
For many of those who work at the company, Rolls-Royce and Derby go back a very long way. I was born and bred in Derby, so I've been in Derby 53 years. I've been at Royce's 36 years. It's like a family business as well, because my wife works at Rolls-Royce. <laughs> Rolls-Royce, I'm unemployed, you know, so it means a lot to us. Oh, I think it means a lot to Derby, full stop, really. You look up to Rolls-Royce, I bet there's not anybody, really, that doesn't know somebody that works at Rolls-Royce. 40 years since I was uh, 18 I joined Royce's. I actually worked on um, Spitwire, an Merlin engine. The choir's been in existence for 50 years. We celebrated the 50 years last year and had a big concert to celebrate that. Fifty years and nearly six months. <laughs> they, they sang at my wedding, and which was very nice. And I came back with my daughter when she was 11 days old, and she sat in a pram and rocked all the while while we were singing <laughs> for months. And months. <laughs> Derby is Rolls-Royce. We've got lots of other engineering companies, but you mentioned Derby, everybody says Rolls-Royce. The company used to be most famous for its luxury cars, but that all ended in the early 70s. Today, Rolls-Royce cars are actually made by BMW. The company's real heritage is aircraft engines. In fact, they've powered some of the world's most iconic aircraft, from Second World War fighter planes and the Harrier jump jet to the much-loved Concorde. And that heritage continues today, powering helicopters, business and military jets, and even ships. But the star product is the pioneering family of Trent jet engines including the newest Trent 1000 for the Boeing Dreamliner. All the Trent engines are designed for jumbo-style, wide-bodied airliners, like Boeing 777 and the famous Airbus Super Jumbo. But this engine for the Airbus 330 is the biggest seller of all. In 15 years, the Trent 700 has clocked up 13 million flying hours. It's a massive machine, but it's, it's a real piece of precision engineering too. Weighing at least five tons, each Trent engine is worth several times its weight in silver. Only two companies in the world are capable of building engines this good. It's a very tough competition between one of the most powerful and uh, competitive companies in the world in General Electric. But if you look at all the latest new technology aircraft, all have selected Rolls-Royce engines to power the first flight. It carries a payload of 242 tonnes at 37,000 feet for 9,500 miles which, as you can imagine, is a serious challenge for any technology to deliver. So it really is at the high end of manufacturing and assembly. And I often describe what we do as producing things of beauty. But the popularity of the Trent 700 is also the factory's biggest challenge. With orders placed to build 400 new engines, the company has to produce at least four a week. For their production line, one of the most complex in the world, time is big money. Each Trent engine is built from modules, eight separate sections which are put together on the assembly line. But each module is made from thousands and thousands of components. And the monumental task of gathering them starts here at their massive parts warehouse. On average, with my pedometer, I average about eight miles a day. 
on an average day, but if we have lots and lots of issues, my best is just under 16 miles in a day. Lots and lots of shoe leather use. Kevin Carr's job is to make sure every engine part is delivered to the assembly line on time. I do know the guys around here say, you know, you just give me a part and we'll show me a box and I can tell you what it is and where it goes. Everything's footprinted, ready for the guys. It's a bit like a sweet shop for them. They can pick and choose what they want. We supply the very first nut, bolt or washer that they fit right up to the very last little bit of plastic that we put on the engine before it goes out the door to the customer. So that could be anything up to 30,000, 40,000 parts, depending on which engine it is. It's Kev who kicks off every new engine build. Two days before the assembly begins, he triggers the dispatch of tens of thousands of parts from the warehouse. Have we got all the bits there for it? Yes. Got all the paperwork? Yes. Yeah, so we're all ready to go then. OK, thanks very much, Tom. Looking at the boxes, you wouldn't know, but just looking at the odds and sods that are lying on the floor, there's nothing under a, a thousand pounds. You've got the engine control management unit, roughly three quarters of a million pounds worth in that box, just sitting there on a pallet. Anything up to 200 million pounds worth of stock on the shelf, we have roughly five engines worth of stock of anything. Some of the components that make this engine what it is were designed and built by some of Britain's most skilled and innovative engineers. high-grade titanium. They're destined to become one of the components that make Rolls-Royce Trent engines truly unique. When you walk onto a plane, you look into the engine, that's the fan blade, and that's what we make here. Mike Wallace's job is to transform the raw metal into high-performance fan blades. The fan blade delivers 75% of the engine's thrust. It shifts about 1.2 tonnes of air per second and the loading on the blade is something like 90 tonnes centrifugal load when it's at full throttle. That's like hanging 13 double-decker buses off each of the 20 blades. The enormous fan is what distinguishes a modern jumbo engine from older turbo jets. They didn't have a fan at the front and relied entirely on the jet exhaust to thrust the plane forwards. Faster than a propeller, but inefficient and very noisy. But in a turbo fan, like a Trent engine, the energy of the exhaust is harvested to turn the massive fan blades at the front, which in turn push huge amounts of cold air quietly around the sides of the engine. And that's what thrusts the plane forwards. The Trent fan blades are unique. So, which section is this? And it's all down to their design. The original blades used to be solid, but in order to get better performance, take weight out of the engine, it was designed to be hollow, and, and our manufacturing processes, which is unique, has actually enabled us to, to make that and advance the technology within Rolls-Royce. Every single fan blade is worth as much as an average family car. For each blade, three sheets of metal are bonded together to make a solid titanium sandwich. It's a process so secret it can't be shown on television. 